everybody. Looks like we made it to another week. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone is doing okay. Um, staying away from that horrible virus out there. Uh, so I'm excited to be here with you. So look, we have Mike S. here. How you doing? It's good to see you, Mike S. Mike Deloach, good to see you. Willie, how are you, sir? And we have Roy. Good to see you, Roy. And let's see who else we have. We have Patty. Always a pleasure. And uh, so it's great to see you again, uh, Mr. Mike. And Paul, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. Honey is here. How are you, Blue? Jesus, how's it going? We got Tone. Very cool. Nice group already. That's so exciting. And so I like to see that. That's very, very cool. So today we are up to part four. And part three was interesting. One of the things, oh, I'm doing well, Willie. Always a pleasure, sir. Missed you last week. And uh, I know you're working hard. And, uh, you know, that's always a good thing. So who had snow recently? So uh, we're getting snow, I think, on Saturday which is going to be interesting. So looking forward to that, not looking forward to that. <laughs> you know, I like snow and everything. It's great to have you back, Mike. Definitely, definitely. So we got Mike Deloach and we have Mr. Mike S here, which is fantastic. And uh, so I'm just really excited to be doing this piece and we're going to be working back and forth with some pastel action and stuff like that we'll see how that goes uh hey brad good to see you how's it going that is so great brad ordered one of the extreme patriot arrows which i'm almost completed and we're going to get that after him asap so you guys have been really great purchasing the Extreme Patriot Arrow. And, uh, you know, I just work so hard to make sure that I cross every T and dot every I, make sure they work as well as my own. And that's a tall order. So a lot of stuff involved, you know. So uh, thank you for your patience, my friend. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, let me go to Pure Ref. If you guys don't know about Pure Ref, I highly recommend it. Pure Ref is like the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, it always stays on top when you have your reference, which is really fantastic. And it's so easy. You can enlarge and, and uh, you know, make it large or small, turn it around, so many different things. The best way to work if you are working off the computer which is, you know, most of us do, right? Which is really important. Brad, good to see you, Mr. Mummery. How's it going? Oh, Mike, you haven't touched it. Oh, wow. Well, we're going to have to change that. We'll get you back back in the swing of things. You know, you love it too much, my guess, not to airbrush. So, so I'll do everything I can to uh, get you going again. So that's... Uh, yeah, Roy is from, uh, Brad Newland and Roy are both from Baltimore. How cool is that? That's very cool. Hey, Marcelo, how are you? Great to see you, sir. From Rio de Janeiro. That is amazing. So Rio de Janeiro, como vai você? That is, uh, that's Portuguese. And so I'm really happy to see you, Marcelo. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. And... Let's load this guy up right here with some of the sepia medium mix and see how that goes. And so that is exciting, you know. And let's see. We're going to come over here. Put a little bit of that medium mixture in there. See how it goes. And we'll go from there. So always want to test out your airbrush you know, before you actually go into your own work, you know? And so let's see here. Let's give it a quick shot. So 
We're working on this, and one of the things I noticed last week, when you do work with sepia, it's always best to be working with white paper as opposed to uh, a tinted paper because the lights just wasn't showing up. Oh, Wendy was by, uh, so Willie, uh, Willie's asking how Wendy is doing, and Wendy was by last week. She said she was doing better, which is good to hear. And uh, so I, I'm sure she'll stop by this evening. She usually stops by for a little bit now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deepen this shadow right here. Just like so. Just deepen that shadow and see how this shadow comes all the way up. And you know, just, just work on the forms making everything turn towards the light gets lighter towards the away from the light gets darker so i say painting the portrait is simple but it's not easy right total pain how you doing john good to see you so glad you were here very very cool so that is so great And so you see how we can just very slowly, the same way we work, let's say, same way that we work, let's say, if we're working, uh, you know, in the regular uh, ink mixtures, you know, and Black India ink, the same thing. It's all the same. So we're just going to slowly build up and just go from there and just continue working that up very slowly. And... So yeah, it's, it's, you're not late at all. It's just getting started. <laughs> and so I like moving around as you can see. Now remember my whole thing. And it's very important. Remember like when it rains in the beginning. Let's say it, it's, it hasn't rained in a couple of days. And it starts raining and the ground absorbs that water from the rain. But then when it keeps raining for a long time, the ground can no longer accept the water. It doesn't get absorbed, so it stays on top. And when it stays on top, that's when splashing happens. So with that concept, I want you to keep that concept in mind. So I want you to hit the area and move on and come back when it dries. If you do that, just hit and come back. You can always build it up extremely slowly. And that is the secret to airbrushing. Uh, well, one of the secrets and a very big one. And well, since I'm doing these live streams, they're not going to be a secret for much longer. And because I don't hold back. So this is something that's really going to help your, it's going to really help your work is just realize that you hit an area, let it dry, then come back. You can do that infinite number of times just hit it let it dry come back and you will never get spidering because you're letting the ground absorb the rain and then when more water comes it'll absorb it again same thing you're letting the paper absorb the the sepia right the paint or the ink and you're letting that absorb and then you just go ahead and uh, let it absorb, go back, let it absorb, and you won't get spidering, which is really cool. Yes, Mike, yes, spidering is not a good thing. Oh, so Jesus didn't know how small the portrait was. Yeah, it's only, let me see. If we look at the workable area, it's about 9.75 9 inches by... 7.75 so pretty small pretty small is true you know and let's see party time yes <laughs> hey nameless subscriber how you doing good to see ya we missed you last week i'm so glad you're here my friend and then once again we're just going to hit and move right i'm not staying in the same area as i go much darker that's a job for the dark mixture, and we'll get there, right? It's slowly but surely. 
and you see how I can reinforce some really nice dark edges I mean sharp edges just like so just building it up really really slow I did use pastel a little bit last week and uh, we were able to do it oh thank you uh, Willie on the uh, you know he liked the way that I uh, about the um, about about the spidering and making sure that we let uh, we let the the ink or the paint whatever we're using soak and get absorbed by the paper and then you can go back in an infinite number of times which is really cool without spidering but once you continue and push it that's when weirdness happens and we don't want weirdness so I want to get that little edge there so let's zoom in and I'll show you so you see there's a little pencil line there I'm gonna get rid of the pencil line but first I want to bring the dark up to there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hit it let it dry go back in there's no rush you know and that's way I can have some lemonade fresh lemon in it today big difference really good so having all those years of experience in in pastel I'll always go back to it when I need to that's always my ace in the hole so you see how I let that dry now I'm gonna go over it again it's like I'm not in a rush I'd rather do it slowly and have it done right than do it over you know go crazy and destroy the artwork or not destroy the artwork but give yourself a lot of headache right so you see how I'm just coming back you know when things go smoothly it's not a problem to take more time because if things don't go smoothly then you're spending more time fixing it so in reality it's really good uh, so Brad says any of you people getting the media reports about uh, the trucker convoy protests no I haven't I did see the video you sent, Brad that was really cool uh, so that's really cool and you see how we're just gonna go back again see how I'm taking my time and darkening that ever so slowly you know and uh, I'm really enjoying these sepia like anything else it's different than the uh, ink mixtures so you have to treat it a little bit differently you have to baby these a little bit but once you do it really pays off they really pay off so you see how I keep going back slowly but never getting to the point where I'm oversaturating and that's really helping me out and then over here I could shape this shadow here and then shape the shadow again but being very weary not to oversaturate and you know when we rush things that's when things get weird right so if we take our time everything's gonna be cool you know everything's gonna work out and same thing here it's a little bit of a shadow plane here a little bit darker light light is reaching it but it's filtered and it's not direct and being filtered and not direct causes it to be a little bit darker than than light is on areas that are facing the light source quite directly let's put a little bit of a uh, little bit of shadow in those cheeks there remember when when you go further away what you're doing so here's your your airbrush is like a cone a spray pattern and it's the, acts the same way as light so if if the airbrush is close to the surface it's going to be more intense and smaller but as you get away from the surface the cone grows and as the cone grows it's going to be less intense the droplets are going to be further away 
and it's going to be lighter and softer. So just like light, if you take the model and they're right next to the window, the shadows are going to be very harsh and very dark. Yet you take that same model and you push her away from the, no, you don't push the model, that would be mean. Uh, plus she'll kick my butt if I push the model. But if I, if I tell the model to move away from the window, the light is still going to be the same light hitting her, but since it's further away, the cone of light is getting larger and it dissipates. And in photography, that's called the inverse square law, meaning is that light falls, light falls off very quickly to further it the model is away so that's very important you know and oh yeah so these are my own mixtures my guess the light dark and medium mixtures and so i've been working with them for a while this is basically a demo on how they work and they're a lot of fun uh, they, there is a little bit of a learning curve with them, so, you know, just realize that, you know, it's not going to be easy right out of the gate. I mean, they, they work well because they're already mixed for you, but it's just going to be a little bit getting used to. And I'm finding that out too. And I'll be perfecting these even better down the line. But if you want to work in sepia, these will really, really make it a lot more fun. Because this way you don't have to mix the sepia and everything, which is so true. Yeah, without trucks, we are in trouble. So trucks are important and truck drivers, you know, uh, we need them. And there's these little creases in her neck. And we're going to be sure to get that. And you see, the light is falling down this way, so I'm just going to make sure I record it. But remember, I'm not oversaturating, so I'm going to keep moving, right? Keep it moving, Tim. I'm real tempted to just go in there and just go to town, right? And just get in there and really, you know, oversaturate. That's my instinct. My instinct is to oversaturate. We have to suppress our instincts. Sometimes, not always, sometimes we have to suppress our instincts. So, if you don't know me, my name is Timothy John Luke Smith. I'm an airbrush artist. I'm also a fine artist, uh, meaning that I studied uh, everything from oil paints, pastel, pen and ink, watercolor, eight years of art school in New York City, about... 12 years ago, I picked up the airbrush for the first time, fell in love with it, and now I am really probably about 70% airbrush, 30% pastel right now, uh, and I'm just really enjoying it. Coming up with new techniques uh, that will help the student uh, really enjoy the airbrush like they never have before. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be alerted when I have live streams every week. You'll be alerted what they're about. Also, I do videos now and then, videos on different topics like what PSI to use for your compressor, how to project using uh, digital software to help your, your paintings, all that stuff. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. And I really, really appreciate that if you do. So, yep, so that's me. And I do this every week, God willing. And it's such a pleasure, such a great community of like-minded artists, great discussions, everything like that, which is very exciting, you know. Oh, so Mike says... Uh, uh, Oh, so Mike S. asked me, yes, the, me the mixtures are, are sepia mixtures, and they're already mixed, which is really cool, Mike S. Now, Mike Deloach said, similar to photography, are you using the one-third rule of composition layout in paintings? Uh, this is definitely a coincidence, but, you know, 
It's very interesting because I have been working in photography lately and maybe subconsciously it's kind of the one third rule is coming in. So that could definitely be what's happening, Mike Deloach, you know, Mr. Deloach. So, uh, yeah, I plus I'm always looking at paintings, Mike, right? So I'm always influenced by, let's say if I'm and this has always been my life, right? as an artist if i'm looking really heavily at vermeer i'm reading about rembrandt it's almost like during that time period those artists their influences really grow it's very interesting when that happens really is uh nameless says you'll always be alerted when tim accidentally turns on his live stream and forgets it <laughs> yeah that one time that was horrible so yes Thank you, Willie, for letting me know that. That was really great. Uh, oh, Patty says my photography is awesome. Thank you. I'm learning lots of books. Um, I'm somebody who, like, absorbs information once I'm interested, and that's what I'm doing. I'm really absorbing. A lot like the paper absorbs the sepia when we paint on it. Uh, so important, you know? Uh so important to strike while the iron's hot. You know, when you're interested in something, get as much information as you can. Read as much. Watch as many videos. That's really going to help, you know. And uh, I just can't, I, I just can't push it enough uh, or emphasize enough how important it is. Thanks, Willie. Yes, you do, my friend. Willie definitely does. He's a good friend. And I really appreciate you, Willie. So Paul says, can I get that arrow? Can I get that arrow? Looks like it's working really well. <laughs> well, your arrow is right here. So these are the arrows. So this one is this one right here is Mr. Brad, and then this one is uh, yours, Paul. So. But the thing is, most companies, everything, they'll just send it out. But I test these through and through. I still have to put the, the spring in on yours. But these look really good. They work great. But I want them to work amazing. I want them to be... I want your airbrushes to just sing, you know? I, I want them to be a thing, a work of art before they leave my studio and go to yours. So I really pride myself on that because I've had products where I bought it and then it arrives and it's like, hey, this doesn't work the way it should be and there's no worse feeling than that, right? So that's really cool. And Tone says he was watching a couple videos on Norman Rockwell. Yes, I highly recommend, I read this in high school my Adventures as an Illustrator, and that's Norman Rockwell biography, uh, actually written by him, so it's a semi-autobiography. It's a collaboration between him and his son, and they wrote that. And some of the funniest stories about Mr. Norman Rockwell, just great. So I read that book when I was young, when I was in high school, in junior high school, I wanted to be Norman Rockwell. You know, most people want to be firemen. I wanted to be Norman Rockwell, so what a weird kid I was, huh? But I really loved his work and the storytelling he did, you know? Wasn't that just amazing, everybody? I mean, just fantastic. Uh, Eric, how you doing? How's everything? Uh, so Eric says, is that an, a mini Iwata shield? It looks smaller than the one I have. Yes, you can make these. Uh, if you have any kind of plot or anything, uh, Eric, I could email you, I can email you the pattern and you can just go ahead and, uh, cut it yourself, which is really cool. So yes, it's the small pinup shield. And if you look, I actually went ahead and taped the negative shape. So this way when I'm spraying, I don't accidentally have a shape, you know? Yeah. So he was from New York. And then he, at the end of his life, he went to Springfield, and that's where he worked. But he was born and raised, I believe, in uh, Manhattan, 
and then he uh, moved to Springfield, Mass., and that's where he worked most of his life. I think the museum is still in Springfield, if I'm not mistaken. So he was born and raised, I believe, in New York City. Then he moved to, like, New Rochelle as a young artist after he, you know, started getting his career off the ground. And then the end of his life, he was in Springfield, which is very interesting, you know? And Mike, Mike DeLoach says, art nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Loach says plastic notebook dividers are really affordable yes definitely those are really fantastic uh, for that definitely uh, so here's a funny story about Norman Rockwell one year he was doing a painting of a turkey and I think it was for Thanksgiving or something and uh, so the turkey was uh, he couldn't see it through the because uh, he got it from a farm and as he was painting, he couldn't see it very well uh, through the little cage. So when he opened it, he was in New York, mind you, New York City. And when he opened it up, the turkey knocked him over, left the apartment, and actually got down the hallway and actually got out into the street. So what happened, this was very much like a Norman Rockwell painting. So he was running, trying to catch this turkey. And he had all the neighborhood kids in New York City help him to try and catch this turkey in the middle of Manhattan. And that should have been a painting in itself, am I right? It's a very funny story. So the book, My Adventures, of an Ill uh, My Adventures as an Illustrator, is really great tone. If you get a chance, you should be able to get it from the library. It's a really fun, easy read, so... You know, I enjoyed it, so I, I think you'll enjoy it, too. And it's about an artist, so it, it's really fantastic. Oh, thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Yes, always great. Definitely, I agree. And so I'm always glad, I'm glad you're here, Eric. And if you have any questions or comments, I'm always here for you. And, of course, you can always email me, guys, paintedglyphs at gmail.com. And that would be fantastic as well. Mike S. says, Tim, uh, didn't you try to do a nude uh, nature airbrush art, but you couldn't get the foxes and squirrels and rabbits to take off? <laughs> I don't know about that, but that sounds pretty funny. Uh, that's hilarious. And just working. But you know what? I have kind of an approach avoidance, so I really should start working... Uh, down here towards her body. So let's try and make that happen a little bit better. And over here, I think it's always good to try and plow the field. So um, before I go in there, I'm just going to try and get rid of the white. So with the sepia, I usually, you know, with um, when I'm working with my Airbrush India inks, I use white and that works pretty well but the sepia on the toned paper and the white don't work well and you get not a blue shift but this really weird gray shift and it's very bizarre so I recommend when you're working with the sepia inks uh, the sepia paint ink combination I highly recommend you working on white bristol like a bristol vellum that still has a little bit of texture so at least it's grabbing, grabbing hold of it. You know what I mean? So let's see if I could just start getting a little bit of that shadow of her breasts here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to imp and I'm going to introduce some of the, um, which is going to be really cool. I'm going to introduce some pastel later today. So that's cool. And. Oh, of course I missed you, my guest. So cool you're here. And Mike Deloach says, the pack I currently have is Pen Gear, five tab drivers, multiple colors, Walmart. I, oh, that's fantastic. I'm going to look into that. So the those little clear dividers are very good. So that's exciting. So thank you for that. I learned so much from everybody. You all are so gracious to share information with me. So I love that. So we do uh, do several uh, 
little Xerox copies. And what I'm going to do is I want to uh, isolate the background. And I don't know if I cut that out yet. If not, it's a good time for me to do it. Let's see if I did. And that will be easy enough. So let's see. Yes, approach avoidance is always something we have to worry about, Nameless. Definitely, definitely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out her silhouette. I don't know if I have it. Let me double check. Because if I have the silhouette. Yes, there we go. So I could work on the hair without messing up everything. And I could do the face sketch, the face right over I can put something over the face so I don't get more and more sepia where I don't want it so let's see how this goes my friends let's see because I'm gonna come in with some uh, some dark mixture we're gonna work on darkening her hair and let's see how it goes right that's the only thing we can do is see how it goes Right? Uh, I, I remember getting the art supplies every time new school year. You know, there were certain years, like in my junior high school years, and uh, not my junior high, but maybe between fifth and seventh grade, I hated school. Hated it, hated everything about it. And then once eighth grade came, uh, I just loved school and couldn't get enough of it. And that's all the way from college to art school. But there was a time period where I hated school. The only part I liked was when we uh, got new art supplies. And I remember those tab dividers. So that was pretty cool. Pretty cool memories. Let's see here. So here's the hair stencil right there. We can move all this over. So it's good to, you know, go ahead and have a lot of photocopies made or, you know, and then you could just very easily protect the face and the skin when we're going to go a little darker here. So let's go ahead and do that. That would be cool. Wendy, how you doing? Great to see you. How's everything? I heard Northern Texas. I know you're near Dallas, but Northern Texas was supposed to get snow uh, pretty soon, I think. Right? And I don't know if you guys... Oh, okay. So I'm praying that the doctor finds that you are 100% perfect. And, you know, 100% healthy. So... Definitely let us know how you're doing in this. I'm sending good thought that you'll be okay. That you'll are, you are okay. 100% okay. And so I'm going to get my other airbrush. This is the Patriot 105, the Extreme Patriot Arrow, customized by myself. And it's the same airbrush as this, but it has a larger cup. And it's, it's good to have both because you never know if you're going to be working on a background and everything. So you don't got to. You don't have to keep loading it and that's really good so see everyone was asking about you wendy and uh hey mark how you doing good to see you my friend how are you today just shake this up really good really well and nameless says always hated uh grade school yeah kids are can be jerks right they really can good kids are always good kids the bad kids that that spoil things. I have a, a six-year-old student and what a great kid. Oh my goodness, she's just amazing. Uh, so a good kid is priceless. Just so precious, you know. But yeah, the bad kids, and that, that was part of it. There were a lot of bad kids. Uh, you know, during those years, mainly from uh, sixth and seventh grade, you know, part of eighth grade. But you know, when I was happy when I moved 
from an affluent community in New Jersey, and our family moved to New York City. And I thought that that was the worst thing in the world, but the kids were so much nicer in the poor neighborhoods in Astoria. I mean, they were really sweet kids. Yeah, you know, you got into fights and everything like that, but, you know, it, there was no picking on you uh, like the way the kids did in the, you know, more affluent towns. They were real jerks, actually, you know? I did cut out the best part, you know, because, yeah, this is, she's so beautiful. So we're just going to uh, just darken the hair. And we're going to have to adjust, so that's no biggie. Again, we don't want to oversaturate. But I want to lay down the dark, and I know I'm going to have to adjust once I remove this. But the main thing is, is that I'm not dirtying up the background. That's something we don't want to do, right? That's so, so true. So here's the, the dark mixture, and as you can see, it covers really well. And just going to... Continue now always spray away from the shield right if you spray away you have a lot less billowing underneath and that's what we want a lot less billowing And again let that let that saturation uh, You know let all that moisture soak in so very important Oh, great. So that's fantastic. Your brother's launching his website, Wendy. And let's see. You know, Blue, it really is great to get a child interested at a young age. And just to expose little ones, you know, to the arts is really so important. And, you know, because their potential is always limitless and you never know you could spark that interest in them and that could be their career and they you know could make for you know an exciting you know life right you know it might it might you know great artists a lot of great artists were uh, sparked at a very young age and the younger the better, I always say. And expose little ones to everything you can. But yeah, my my student at six years old is amazing. I mean, how fast they pick things up. Faster than I learn stuff, right? At six, they're just like little sponges, which is so fantastic. Nameless says, oh yeah, poor people know how to pick uh, their friends and stick together. Yeah, definitely. I think there's really, you know, economics is great. I mean, I love it when people, you know, are comfortable and that's always a good thing. Uh, but it's always important to stay true and realize that, you know, money is a blessing that comes from God. And once we do that, we can never look down on anybody who doesn't have money. And if we don't have money, we can trust that we are going to be blessed one day. And, you know, maybe not having money right now is, is a good thing. So we have to trust, right? So definitely is money is not a bad thing is how we look at it, right? That's the important thing. And yeah, that's true, you know. But the thing is, you know, I, we have to always worry about being prejudiced against people with money because people with money, some of the coolest people had a lot of money, you know, and they just were like the sweetest, sweetest people ever, you know. So it's, it's both ways, a double-edged sword, right? So we have to, we definitely have to keep an open mind. And uh, give everyone equal chance, right? And if you have money or don't have money, 
it's all what's in the heart, right? I love it in, I think it's in Second Samuel where uh, in the Bible when they say that uh, man sees the outer appearance, but God sees the heart. And that's exciting because I want to see the heart and I hope that people see my heart. And so for me to hope that people see my heart, I have to see their heart regardless of what's on the outside. regardless and, uh, so let's take a look now what I like to do is I like to peel it back so this way I still have it pretty much uh, hey Paul thank you my friend Paul with a super sticker I really appreciate that I like that little guy on the super sticker there very cool <laughs> Uh, thank you Willie you're a great guy yourself and I really appreciate you and uh, so Mike S. says he's so poor he can only afford one O for the word poor. Yeah, but you're rich in my book there, Mike, Mike S., that's for sure. And so thank you, Mark, for supporting the channel and, and giving me that boost that makes me feel so good. And um, I really appreciate that. And, you know, it's these Wednesday nights are just so much fun for me. I... I don't know what I would do without them. So about 2017, I had my first live stream. And, you know, nobody was there. And it was so funny. The live streams would be like crickets. Maybe one person would show up. But I would still do them because I'm like, you know what? One day they're going to be something that a lot of people enjoy. And... And then like in 2018, I said to myself, I am going to, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and perfect the live stream. I'm going to have different camera work and do all these other things so I could uh, try and do the best. Because I feel live stream is such a vehicle to help people uh, learn. It's nothing like seeing it firsthand. Am I right? I mean, that's a big difference. To see it firsthand as... It's nice to see them in videos, but to see it firsthand and be able to ask questions, that's something I never had as a kid, as a young artist, and I would have done anything for it. Now, when I went to school in New York City, we had once a year, our teacher, my teacher was Harvey Dinnerstein, and he would give a demonstration, but that was once a year. And you had to make sure that you got there early so you could watch him paint and, um, now, there were demonstrations, like two-hour demonstrations, but once a year in my, uh, my class at the National Academy, Harvey would paint from the model with us, so he would actually be painting, and I would just sit there and just watch him and just paint and watch him every year. I was with Harvey for three full years, and, and I was like, that's, really, that's the learning, right? Watching and paint while you're learning. Hey, Mike, have a great night, my friend. And uh, don't work so hard. And uh, always a pleasure. And thank you so much for hanging out with us, Mr. Mike Veloach. I really appreciate that. And Brad says, it was your live stream that drew me in. Oh, wow, that is great. Yeah, that was my instinct, Brad, that the live stream is something so unique. And something that I would have loved. And that's why I'm so excited about doing them. And so I'm just going to do another coat. Because that just wasn't dark enough. Whoa, lost my face shield. And remember, let that, let that saturate, right? And... Uh, oh, okay, cool. Design away uh, there, uh, Wendy. Do great work, as you always do. Wendy's designing a website for her brother. Her, her brother's business, which is very cool. So I'm about four inches away. There we go, about four inches away. And we're just... So yeah, the live streams, and I perfected them because I remember... How amazing it was to watch Harvey work 
and ask him questions and work while he's doing it. And that was like exponential growth doing that. So with modern technology and live stream, I was like, this is something I have to protect, perfect, perfect. My guest says, Brad found Tim by mistake. Oh, oh, you found, so my, Mark found me by mistake. Thank you. I'm so glad he said, uh, the, my guest said it's the best mistake he ever made. Thank you, Mike. And Mark said, Tim was the first airbrush live stream he watched and got hooked. Mark, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. So, you know, that is so great. And, and now I know I made the right decision. I'm going to put, I'm going to let this dry a little bit because that gives me opportunity to go ahead and put in some more of the dark mixture. And I'll just shake, shake, shake. And social media banners. Oh, cool. Those are always fun. We're just going to put some of this dark mixture over here. Not too much. I'm just going to... Because I don't want to use too much. And if I put too much in, then I waste it. You know, if I'm doing backwards. Uh, thanks, Mike. I'm so glad you're back, sir. So very glad. We all missed you. I especially missed you, sir. So I'm so glad you're here. And as everyone out there, you guys are all a very big part of this. And I'm really glad that I was directed to uh, do the live streams. And I could have continued doing the videos. I mean, I do videos from time to time, regular recorded videos, of course. But I concentrate on the live streams. And I think a lot of airbrush... Uh, there's some airbrush artists who concentrate on live streams, like uh, the great live streams by Mr. Leahy, uh, uh, Bill, Bill Snagan. He, he does some amazing live streams, and I love that. And the key is to do them, I feel, as consistently as possible. So if nothing else, at least hanging out with the live stream, we're all talking about airbrushing and art you know, for at least two hours a week. And you know what? Two hours a week, not too big. But if you times that by 52, that two hours turned into 104 hours of instruction for you guys. So I know that helps. And that's 104 hours of practice for me. So so that's great. And so, yeah, so it's a, it, it helps me all around. And... Uh, Oh, thanks. So, uh, Mr. Roy at Color Graphics says I'm doing a great job with him. Roy is one of my students. He's just amazing. And I just, uh, you know, watching Roy's development is just a pleasure. And so that is uh, really, really, you know, I really thank you for uh, trusting me to be your, your teacher. You're a great student, sir. Willie says, when he started watching my live stream, my videos, the airbrush was just the underpainting. Oh, that's right. I used to do just the underpainting. That's right. And that is so true. And so Willie is with me from the very beginning. We're talking like long, long ago. Mr. Dickman, good to see you, sir. All the way from Wisconsin. And then we have, uh, then Mike S. says, remember when it was just uh, six people watching? Yeah, I remember when it was nobody. I would come on and I'd hear crickets like, you know, it was nobody. And then it was people like Mike S. and Wendy and Willie. Those are the early, early people, you know, and kept me going. And... Uh, Let's see. Blue says, Tim, have you read Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain? If so, what's your opinion? Worth to read. You know, I never really read Julia Cameron, I believe her name is. Uh, I just never had the opportunity. I once took the book out at the library, but never got around to it. That book has been circulating around my art schools since I was like 16 years old. And... Um, but it never struck me as something I wanted to read. Uh, I know Brad is uh, reading it. He's reading the other book by her. I think The Artist's Way or something like that. So Brad is definitely someone to talk to about this. And Eric says he found him because Blue mentioned him in another chat. And now 
Uh, he's having to catch up on all my other great videos. Thank you, Eric. I'm so glad you're here. And thank you, Blue, for spreading the word. So, it's great that you guys started talking about books and what books I really recommend. And I want to go over a couple of books I really love and why. So, we're just going to take a break. Let this sepia seep in, you know, let the paper absorb it. And what I'm going, uh, first I'm going to get my face mix, my face shield. We'll put her right here. I'm going to go get two books. Uh, you guys already know what books they are. And there's another book which I really love. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to go and start with a book that my students don't know about. So right here, here's a book. It is, oh, Mark says his eyelids are dropping to the floor. Take care, Mark. Always a pleasure. You can always look at the rest of the video tomorrow when you have more energy, and that would be great. So definitely... Just let me know. Uh, I mean, just go ahead and uh, watch this tomorrow. And if you have any questions, you just IM me, you know. So, Mabel says, Does anyone recommend any books exclusive for airbrushing? Okay, here is a really good point that you are going to enjoy. As far as airbrushing, there's plenty of information uh, on YouTube and everything like that. Anything you need. But I really feel that... You, ha you all have to learn about artists, learn about the great artists, the old masters, learn about those who, who uh, know about light and shade. You know, it's one thing learning how to paint with the airbrush, but once you get a handle on that, then you have to learn how, to, how light works, how anatomy is how to how to sketch the forms all those different things so uh, the first book i want you to get is and i don't know if it's still in print but you can get it uh you know through amazon maybe four or five dollars it's called artists on art from the 14th to the 20th century now this book has all the different artists out there and what's really great is that these are from letters and uh, discourse and conversations that these artists have. And they talk about, about their technique and what's important to them. So here's one from a 17th century uh, uh, Italian sculptor, Bernini. Everyone knows of Bernini. But actually has letters of him and has he talks about so right here so here's Bernini and you could read what Bernini says about Michelangelo these are not just these mythological people they put their pants on one leg at a time like everyone else and they were struggling the same way that you have but they're great examples of what we can do when we really put our mind to it so Bernini on Michelangelo says um, he says here, Michelangelo would never make portrait. He was a great man, a great sculptor, and architect. Nevertheless, he had more art than grace and consequently failed to equal the, er, the ancients. For a surgeon, for a surgeon like he applied himself chiefly to anatomy. So basically what he's saying is, in his opinion, that Michelangelo didn't pay enough to the, enough attention to the Greek and Roman sculptures. He basically uh, paid more attention to 
the Renaissance attention to anatomy and they used to do dissections and stuff like that and so so it's really great so like let's say you want to look up someone else right let's say a big person I believe I don't know if he's in here but everyone here loves uh, Mr. Salvador Dali see a lot of pictures of Dali let me see if he's here that goes up to Dolly, so I think he should be here. So let me look in the table of contents. So, you know, it's so great because uh, a lot of people uh, might be interested in a painter, but the thing is, uh, you know, how, how exciting to hear things from their own words, right? I mean, I think that's much more exciting than what other people say about them. So we have Diego Rivera, we have different artists here. And what's really cool, so if you look someone up and you're really excited about what they had to say, then you could look up their work more deeply and actually uh, what really helps. So I'm looking for Salvador Dali and it all depends on the, the actual author. So. So I don't see Dolly in here. So I don't think this guy likes surrealism. Or that could be it. But let's see if we have Dolly. So looks like we have up to Danye Dormier, but not Dolly. But let's say, uh, you know, you've discovered the work of Edgar Degas, you know, the pastel painter. So you can go to Drio 7 and Drio 7, they have something on either someone else talking about Degas. Okay, so here's Degas from his notebooks and sayings. And it's great to hear, you know, what these artists had to say. So now this is what he said which is quite interesting he says a picture is something which requires as much canavery trickery and deceit as the perpetration of a crime uh the the, the perpetration of a crime paint falsely and then add the accent of nature so that's very interesting what he said so he said you know try and make things like a little bit, you know, kind of fake it, make it more fantasy, and then put a little bit of nature in it. Very controversial. But that right there, if we think about that, that could be, hey, Clutch, how you doing? Good to see you. That could be a whole statement. So so let me read that again. So this is what Edgar Degas said. A picture is something which requires as much canavery, trickery, and deceit as the perpetration of a crime. He says to paint falsely and then add the accent of nature. He goes on to say that the artist does not draw what he sees, but he must make others see. Interesting. Only when he no longer knows what he is doing does the painter do good things. And then... So that's interesting. So, so Degas says, only when he no longer knows what he is doing or she does a painter do good things. So he's saying when we go on autopilot, we do some really cool things. Omas, good to see you. So very interesting stuff. So yeah, I mean, this book is just, my goodness, this is just a wealth of information. These are men and women who dedicated their life to art. And if you want to have insight to that, I think that is so fantastic. Uh, Winslow, uh, James McNeil Whistler, he was born, he was born in Massachusetts, but studied in France, and then he lived his life in in England. Very interesting character, Winslow. So that, so definitely, if you want to have a lot of fun. Uh, you want to learn about being an artist, not an airbrush artist, but an artist, because the airbrush doesn't encompass you. The air, you're the artist, you're using the airbrush. So remember that, everybody. So this book, I was watching uh, Blue, I was watching what you were doing, and Blue was doing some great pencil drawings. 
and she really is growing as an artist and I always say draw 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 all the time John Augusta Dominique Angra said draw even draw when you don't have a pencil in your hand draw with your eyes right and that's so important right and so always remember that And so let's see, uh, let's keep going over here. So, so Blue, with this, I want you to get this book. And those who want to draw, you know, and get better with your airbrushing, this is going to make you a better airbrush artist. This is going to make you a better airbrush artist because it's going to make you a better artist. And that's so much more exciting, right? Hey, what's up, James? So, so many different, really important, the contour. What is the contour, right? What's going on with the contour? How important is that contour? Is, that, is, it, is it just the outer edge or is it something having to do with the inner forms? You'll find those answers in this book. Uh, talking about how muscles work. How one muscle is contracted and the muscle on the other side of the leg is relaxed. And you'll find that everywhere, right down to the deltoid, to the leg, to the calf. One side of the muscle is gonna be contracted, the other side of the leg is gonna be relaxed. And it's sort of that, that sort of uh, contrast within everything. Talks about light, what's happening with light. So, this book will be really amazing. So if you get a chance, you're going to love that book, guys. Now, this guy is Anthony Ryder. Very interesting. He, he studied at the Art Students League a little bit before I studied at the Art Students League. And he studied with Ted Seth Jacobs. So Anthony Ryder is Ted Seth Jacobs' student. Now, Ted Seth Jacobs was a great artist. He was teaching at the... Art Students League, but I was into Harvey Dinnerstein's work, but I would have studied with him because he's a great artist as well. So if you want to learn about color and you want to learn what color does, you know, what are the effects of color on form? What are the colors? What are the effects of light on form? These are things. Now, there are so many books out there. My goodness, there's so many books out there. Most of them are garbage. Most of them are just going to be blah, 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 blah. This stuff is really going to help you. So look how he talks about, about light, about how light works on cylinders, on round forms, and how mastering this stuff is going to help you to master a portrait. How light works, how... How light sort of uh, bathes itself o over the forms. Uh, you can see here what he's talking about. Then he goes into color. Now really goes into color. Really, you know, like color fields and what color does. Uh, as, uh, you know, when you have warm colors and how it affects the skin. All those different things. Edges and stuff like that. Just really fantastic, fantastic thing. So, so this book, to learn about line and contour in drawing. This book, to learn about color and learn about, uh, also about light and how it affects, uh, affects color. And if you want to think like an artist, definitely, this is so much important. Like I said, there's a lot of, you guys are all artists who use the airbrush. So that's most important. So definitely, if you get those books, you guys are going to be in great, great shape. Trust me when I say this. I won't steer you wrong. I've been looking for good art books, and those are the only ones I read, and I read them over and over and over again. I read these books about one, about three times a year. I'll read... The uh, Ted Said Jacob books and the Anthony, Anthony Ryder. This I'm always perusing through because if you know about art history, you'll know where you fall. You know what you love. You'll know the artists who are your heroes. 
That, my friends, is the exciting part. That is the journey because you are painters, you are artists. Always remember that. Yes, we fell in love with this stuff, but mainly we, we, you guys will all get a handle on this. This is, this is not anything that takes talent. It just takes practice and time, and you can master this just like everyone else has. And so, but always think about, you know, what are you trying to say? What is it about art that draws you in? What do you, what do you want to leave behind? Those are things. And if you, you, the men and women who are in this book throughout history will really give you insight on the life. And also what's really great, make you not feel alone because as an artist, in society, you know, when I'm just out there among the population, I feel so weird because no one's an artist, right? You know, I mean, there are people who dabble, but there's no one who made it their life. So it really helps me to uh, feel like I'm not alone. So I really hope that, that those books are books that you will try and get. And the great thing is you just come back here and we will... Uh, we will go ahead and, uh, you know, discuss it, you know, discuss a chapter together, any questions you have. So, uh, oh, great, Willie. Yes, those books are so fantastic and they never get old. If you read them 10 times, you'll get everything. You'll get something from it every time, which is great. Uh, and so that's so fantastic. And, uh, and Mike S. says he's, he, he's lost reading, has to do it, and, or watch it done. That's okay. We all learn different ways. But even having those books in your, in your library are going to, you know, it's just nice to have it. And, uh, you know, maybe read a passage or two. And if you're interested or you have questions, Mike, always feel free to send me a message. And I love discussing it, you know. And, of course, lots of anatomy books, right? Find yourself some good anatomy books. That will make your life very easy. Ooh, this magnet does not want to come up. So this is a bit of a dilemma. So I have to find a strong magnet to get that. So how are we going to do it? Maybe two magnets? There we go. Got it. Because I didn't want to drag it along the surface. That would have been bad. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so nice dark. We got a nice dark there. And uh, let's move into the pastel portion of this. I think that would be a lot of fun. And let's see, Brad says, prefers to see it on video and everything. But books are great because they complement each other. Yes, video is fantastic. But have that book. Don't put any pressure. Just look and maybe read a passage, a passage or two and see if anything sparks your interest, right? And so that's really cool. Uh, Thameless says, ever read the complete book of drawing, Essential Skills for Every Artist, Barrington Barbara. Probably the best book uh, that he has on art. Oh, wow, I got to check that out. I definitely will look into that. So thank you for that. So the best, the best book, the best uh, thing I have is my library card. I just, I have open borrowing, so I can borrow from five million different titles over several counties and I find it online they send it to me so otherwise I'd be broke ah uh, clutched all right thank you so much for hanging out my friend always a pleasure and I will talk to you soon on your airbrush so so that's gonna be great so we're gonna get your airbrush going 100% so thank you so much for stopping by my friend and let's see so yeah it's a little I know it's it's 9 30 to 11 30 I know that's late and I really appreciate you guys for hanging out let me get my little stool here okay we're gonna bring some of my pastels over just like so and that 
should be sufficient. And then I come here with my little palette, my pastel palette. And we'll put this here like so. And I think this will work out. Famous last words. Okay. I think we'll do it this way. Move this over here. Bring this down. Bring this over. All right, so now. All right, so let's see. Um, okay, fantastic. So we don't need this. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring some light into, into her chest area here. So I'm just going to... Now, if anyone wants to learn pastels, for someone who has a lot of years as a member of the Pastel Society of America, uh, I do have pastel classes. If you're interested, you let me know. And so let's see. So we're going to... I want to come in and get this sort of uh, grayish color here. And it's just a little bit of gray with a little bit of the flesh color together. But it's not a dull gray. Let's see if we can nail this color here. That's a little rich, so what we'll do, and what I like to do is have some scissors and I can just cut it and start to color over again. And if you ever put in the wrong color, you can just come here with your kneaded eraser and you can just tap that away, just like so. Pastel is one of the most forgiving mediums on the planet, if you know what you're doing. See here, I can just come in with this kind of bluish gray color and just bring that over. The reason why I'm doing this is because the yellow paper does not work well with the sepia after I put in the white mixture. And the white mixture, you know, remember that white mixture is that combination of uh, Drew Blair's 50-50 white. And I'll just put this in like this. And I'll warm that up a little bit with a little sepia color. Warm this up. Now, if you ever mess up, you just tap it. And you just start over. And then you come back in. And you get a really nice, a nice translucent gray here. And just have patience with yourself, and you'll get there. And then I can go over this with the medium mixture of the of the airbrush uh, sepia. You can come here. So what I'm doing is establishing some of these these grays and doing it where I'm not getting that blue shift, right? So I'm just working on avoiding the blue shift. And this is a good way for me to get those values, establish them without having that issue. So that's good. Right over here. See how I can sort of start with this warm value and then I could gray it up as we go. It's always more than one way to handle something, you know? Oh, yes. Well, it's always fun to build them up, you know? It's always fun to build up your library. So 
Have fun rebuilding your library, uh, honey, definitely. So you see we have some of like a warmish color, a sepia here. So I'm just going to bring that over, this warm sepia. And I can always adjust, your kneaded eraser is such an important tool. And so this way I'm establishing those values and not worrying so much about what that white is gonna do. Cause that kicked my butt last week. Ain't gonna lie. But it's not what happens to you when you're painting, it's what you do about it, right? That's really important. Omar says, uh, did, oh, Omar's asking if you sold your books. Oh, I see. So yeah, you know, there was actually 26 people here uh, when I was uh, talking about the book. So, so doing book reviews, art book reviews, is that something that you guys would like to see every now and then? Let me know, I'll do more of them. Definitely, whether it be anatomy books or uh, books on art and artists, uh, reviews on art magazines. I can definitely do that during the live streams. Right? Oh, yes. Well, your local library. So I don't know if you know this, Blue, but with your library card, look into getting open borrowing. And this way you could go online and look at all the books in your county or, or borough. And, uh, and what they'll do is they'll actually deliver the book from different libraries to your home library. And so you can, you know, borrow books from there, which really works out just amazingly. And then I could come back and uh, gray that out. So let's see. See right here on her shoulder, it's way too, uh, too gray and dingy. So we're gonna fix that. Let's see here. Just gonna come here. Put in this kind of sepia over here. Now the trick is, is like when you're applying the pastel, you don't want to just continue rubbing it into the surface because then you're losing its strength. So you just want to come in, hit it and move, right? Hit and move, just like airbrush. Very similar, very similar. And uh, oh, so Eric knows about that. That's great. I hope books get a revival because I love books. Guilty as charged. I mean, books are just so important. Any topic I want to learn, I could just get a couple of books. And I love that part in uh, Goodwill Hunting when he says that uh, he spent, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars on a college education that he could have got for $1.50 in late charges at the local public library. I believe that to a certain extent, you know, that that's true. But, you know, college is very important. Those who have college degrees, I don't, I don't minimize that at all. As you can see, I'm just bringing that dark down. Hey, Rick, good to see you. How are you, my friend? He has trouble mixing create text colors to get the correct shades. He's looking for any tips for him, how to approach it. So you're struggling mixing create text colors. Well, I think the same thing when you're mixing colors is just like the inks. Just go very thin and just continue going from light to dark and you won't have any blue shift and you'll be able to slowly get the values. So just, and just like working in watercolor, Rick, uh, you just wanna slowly build up 
and that works for me and also when you're working very thin you are you know you're you're being assured to have a very um you know a good flow so it, it's just good practice all around to try that if you're not already doing that rick and remember thin is always better let the surface catch up to uh let that the paint catch up to the surface you know don't oversaturate you know and and just build up your values from light to dark and you'll be okay so just like i do the uh you know my airbrush india inks is the same you want to do it um you know with color and create text i think you'll have a good time give that a try if you have any questions you let me know rick okay and so now i'll come here and i'll start bringing in some of some of this color over here and then we'll come in with the sepia airbrush and try and bring this together so many different tools that you could use you know And let's see what people are saying. It's like the pigments are too bright to begin with. Well, that's the thing. You never want, and that's a great point, Rick. You never want to use the color. You always want to calm that color down because in nature, most everything is grayed down or the saturation isn't as high. So that's very important to, to have that, to make sure that, you know, because it is going to be too saturated, right? It's going to be too strong out of the out of the bottle, and that's true in any any brand, you know, of paint. You just and what you want to do is, uh, you know, dilute them really a lot and uh, just go very slowly. Also, what I like to do. So let's. Hey, Todd, good to see you. One of the things I like to do is when I'm working. I like to have a test if I'm doing a color I have like a small test panel and I work on that and I basically will experiment and see how it looks on the test so if I mess up on the test especially if I go further into the painting I'm not killing all the hard work I do I experiment on the little panel and then from there I go ahead and uh, decide whether or not to put it on you know my my working painting right that helps otherwise you'll just have a hard time you'll get all these weird things and having that little test is great because I can actually experiment with that which is great so that's fantastic as you can see how I kind of build up this shadow here and the same thing I can do the same exact thing I could build up some of these shadow areas and if like i said if it's too strong with pastel you can always uh, erase it with the needle eraser same thing i can come in here again and we can just build out some of these kind of uh, yellow ochre type of of uh, skin tones here and you can always desaturate it later so you just establish it and then go back same thing here I could come in again if it's too dark don't try and blend it just tap it with your kneaded eraser and you could just remove it and continue that way always follow the grain of the skin that's always true in every medium follow that grain of the skin which is so important you know and uh, so yeah that's good information there nameless so always good I'm glad you guys are helping each other out that's what this channel and community is all about just helping one another out become better artists and so as you see as I'm working this I can come in with my media mixture and I can start sculpting some of this see how I could Go over the pastel with some some of the sepia here and I can just sort of build this up here just like so 
again you can come in and you can lightly tap the pastel make sure you don't oversaturate it you know with this paper it's not my color line the, the pebble gray so it has a lot new new problems with this paper so that's why I'm working very slowly with it and that's what you want to do too. work very slowly build it up slow and so now uh, I want to come in and maybe lighten up this area here of her face so let's see if we can do that just a little bit see how this works Just add a little bit of light here, a little bit of dimension. And Brad says, Tim, what is your favorite brand of airbrush paint and why? Okay, so, so there's two things. So if as a line of paint, I like golden. Uh, the why I like golden is that you have a full range of their high flow, which is very thin and almost ready to airbrush right away but then you can incorporate their heavy body so you can get impasto techniques you know where it's thicker stuff like that so that's very important to have that full range and that's what i really love about about golden is that you could get impasto now if you're working in createx or or one of the airbrush paints you can't get impasto you can't get thick paints you can't introduce the palette knife the thing is, with Golden, all of their heavy body, their fluid, their high flow, their open, everything has the same DNA so you can mix and match. And that, to me, is a really good reason why I like Golden. Now, if you're doing something very thin, you're working in thin application, then I say Createx is a good paint to use. Especially Drew Blair's fifty, uh, Drew Blair's illustrations—they're amazing uh, for having that flow right out of the right out of the gate. The erasability, nothing, nothing matches the erasability of the Createx uh, illustration line. One hundred percent agree. That's the best. Do I like the Wicked? Not so much. But that's only for my taste, right? You guys might love Wicked. That's great. But any of my color airbrush paintings has always been with the Golden. In the early years, I used Createx, and that's great. But I like to add, I like to add impasto techniques. So if you look at this painting, this is something I did in airbrush a couple of years back and this is with golden paint but if you notice that there is impasto technique here so with golden I was able to use their heavy body acrylics and paint that with a brush and a palette knife so I like that ability to do both now this is not actually uh, this is not actually um, the painting this was the practice painting for the larger one so I did all my experimenting on this right so that's pretty cool so um, so that's why I love it so you know but it's all connected uh, but if I'm doing something you know that's just gonna be a straight airbrush painting with not impasto or anything Drew Blair's 5050 illustration white seems illustration Paints are the best because of the erasability. Nothing's better with that. So it depends on what I'm doing, right? I'll have a game plan when I start, and that will work out really well. So sorry I haven't answered your oops, any questions I missed. If I missed any questions, please retype them. So this way I, uh, you know, I don't I don't want to ignore anybody. It's just I'm painting and I haven't maybe not seen you so James I'm so glad you're here so how you doing James how's everything James is a really cool guy and always great uh, great insight when he's on the live streams so thank you my friend for coming by as always 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 a pleasure 
We're going to bring this uh, gray color over. Let's see how it works. Yes. So there's a lot of gray in flesh, and this is really, I have to calm this down. A lot of gray in flesh, and we want to make sure that we get that. And we'll just pull some of this gray over here. Over here, I'm going to try and come here with a little bit of gray. Let's see how this works. We can always erase it if we don't like it. And then we have these little packing peanuts, which are really fantastic. Let me see if I have some. There's one over here. And these are the packing peanuts that you have when you uh, go to like the UPS store or something like that. So you see, I can just come in here. And if there are any areas that are too dark, I can just tap. And I can just assimilate that. So any kind of irregularity, you can always tap that which is really great. So let's go ahead and work on her forehead. That's sort of like a trouble area for me. Uh, oh, cool. So there's doing well with another resident student. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. And let's see here. I'm going to get my reference here. And let's see if I could come in and start modeling her forehead here. Let's see. I'm just going to put some color here. And this way we can add some of the lighter color. And I think I'm going to go... Now, what's, what's cool about pastels is that you work from soft, from hard to soft in pastel. So we want to introduce some of the softer line of pastel. And that would be like your Schmincke, Senelier, those kind of brands, right? So we want to try and see if we can introduce some of those softer line here. Let's see what we have. So here's a Senelier white. It's kind of like an off-white, but I think this will serve us well. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here. And what I like to do is I like to mix some of the softer pastels with the harder pastels to get a more of a slow variety of value as I build them up. So let's see how this goes. And I want to build up this white here because you see I'm not getting coverage because the pastel is not thick enough, but if I or or soft enough. So if I want a softer application, I just, I mean, a, a more opaque application, I just have to come in with softer pastels. And you see, I can definitely do that. is really cool and I could sort of assimilate this area this time it's kind of broken up a little bit so we can definitely and we'll see what happens when we go over it with the airbrush a lot of times when you go over pastel with the airbrush you get a beautiful uh, translucent value so we'll see how that goes And let's, while we're here, let's bring in some of these lights. Look right here. Some of these beautiful lights in the face. You can sort of pull that over. And I may have to just do several layers here just to get a nice coverage. And then I could kind of work that over. You just got to stick with it, everybody. Stick with it. Not every painting is going to go smoothly. 
but it's how you handle those paintings that don't go smoothly. Uh, Lu uh, Willie, have a great night. Your painting's going out pretty soon. I'll let you know when I have that tracking number for you, Willie, okay? And really appreciate your patience. And uh, so Rick says the Golden Paints websites have a digital mixing palette. That is amazing. I highly recommend that. That you'll have a great time with. So definitely. Uh, I think people like the idea I'm working in pastel because so many people are here right now in the class. I mean, in the live stream. So that is cool. Maybe I'll, I'll add more, more pastel work in the future. So that's something I might do, you know. So always a pleasure, my friend. So always a pleasure, Willie. And thank you so much for stopping by. Such an honor that you all just hang out with me. Once again, my name is Timothy John Luke Smith. I'm a pastel painter, airbrush artist, and uh, I give live streams every Wednesday. If this is something that interests you, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and you'll be alerted when I have new live streams and all kinds of uh, other topics I go on, from airbrush compressors, to doing full paintings from beginning to end like this. So you really could see my process. So you see like on the videos, the live streams all have part one, two, three, four, all the way up to the finish. And I never do anything on the painting that I don't do in the live stream. So this is the only live stream out there where you see everything from start to finish. And, and I really, am happy to offer that so that is very important that i offer it see how it's a little too strong so what i can do is just either go over it with a light pastel or if it's just not erasing you or you know it's sort of uh having a weird texture you can just tap it until it goes away it'll just take off that pastel for you which is absolutely fantastic and James says, love pastels. It gives a shadowy and nebulous depth. It sure does. Mabel says, Tim, I've been telling you, you need to add some color in your live streams, be it a pastel paint or whatever. Yeah, I think I am. I think 2020, we're going to be working in color more. So thank you for that, Nameless. I always listen to your guys' uh, advice. So that was good advice, sir. So definitely. Thank you for that. And thank you for, you know, taking the time to give me advice. I appreciate it. Uh, just come over here. See how we can just add a little bit of interest there. Uh, let's give a little bit of a strength in that light there. So I can use this. And I can just hit this highlight really nicely there. But that's not a true, it's like an off-white color. So that's not going to serve us well. So I'm just going to tap it and get rid of that. And one of the things is when you're doing, let's say, uh, when, you, when you're working on a highlight, you have to set it up, right? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up that highlight. So if I look at that nose, it's like a, a light pinkish color around the nose. So let's go ahead and try and put that in. Sort of a grayish pink color here. We're just gonna set up that nose for the highlight. It's always good to set it up, right? And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this gray pink color over a little bit, which is cool. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am a madman. That's true. They say the unreasonable men are the are the, the unreasonable men and women are the ones who change the world. So I am definitely guilty to being unreasonable. That's for certain. And uh, just gonna continue working here, just like so. And that's too pink over there. See how I went a little nuts. And so let's calm that down. And we can go, always go back with the needy eraser and just pluck out the pastel that we put there. It just lifts so easily. And that's great. Let me zoom, let me make sure that she's in focus here. 
There we go, she's in focus now. And now if we come in with that white, will it work? Let's see. So now I wanna put in that highlight. So let's see how that works. So you see now that we set up that highlight, that now it kind of pops out. Before it wasn't because it was too light. Contrast is so important and we also want to make sure we get the shape of that highlight because if the shape is off, whether it's, uh, you know, more oblong or something, the, the highlight will describe the shape. And if we change the highlight, we are going to, um, it's going to affect the, the description of her forms, right? Whether it be the nose or the forehead or something like that. So see, we can just, just sort of add some light there. And now we'll shape the light. See how we can shape that light a little better. And this is definitely much softer. So we're just gonna tap it and sort of blend that in. And I think that works really well. And let's put a little bit of an earthy color over here, right? A little earth tone. Let's see how this works. You know, we can always erase, so it's no problem. And remember, every painting that you work on, you stick with it. You know, you don't give up and start over, you know, and that's so important. So as you see now, I'm just gonna start sculpting her forehead here and really make it turn towards the light and away from the light. love it now we're starting to get rid of that 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 texture I didn't want so let's continue which is nice so we can definitely start getting the skin texture we want but you know it's that tenacity sticking with it right you'll get it it's just that we have to we have to make sure that we don't we don't give up and there's some light in this dark here so we're just gonna Add a little bit of light in here. A little bit of translucency. Same thing here. We have a lot of translucency over here, so let's put that in. Now you want to make sure that you don't go too soft everywhere. Some places you you want to stay on the hard side with the pastel because you want to you want to build up the texture slowly. little bit of a greenish color over here. Let's put in that greenish color. Ever so light, just the slightest glaze of green. It's not over till it's over. You're gonna keep working, you're gonna keep, keep being tenacious and it's gonna come together. I promise. And if it doesn't, the worst thing that you could get is more knowledge. All right, you're gonna put a little bit of green there. See where else we can add some of that really nice green color. Uh, right over here, we got a little bit of green happening there. And let's put in some of that really rich uh, pink in the lips there. And I'm not trying, so one of the things is I'm never trying to get the exact color, right? I'm always trying to play with the color and, uh, you know, and arrive at the color as opposed to trying to mix it. 
you wanna you wanna just do layers and just slowly get the values you want rather than mixing it and then putting it on there. That's so much more effective, I think. Uh, and uh, so yeah, color is great, you know. I, but I also feel that black and white is something that we should master before we go into color. So that's one of the reasons why primarily on my site it's always you know black and white because if you master color or you master black and white color becomes much easier so that's my theory around that so we're going to go ahead and uh, try and mix some of this pink and see if we could just establish some of that bottom lip there Just a little bit. The upper lip has a little bit of pink right here. Nothing too big. And maybe a little richer pink on this side. Now I'm just going to do a very light glaze. Remember, just like digital art, the lighter the pressure, the, the lighter the application, right? So that's how we have to think. You know, if we put a little bit of pressure, it's going to be a very light application. Let's do that. And now we're just putting in. So once you have a color and you're like, oh, that's a good color, Tim, then we could look and see, well, where is that color elsewhere? And while you have it in your hand, you can go ahead and echo that color in different areas, right? So color is something that is more intuitive than I feel that a lot of artists actually, uh, for my taste, I like to be a little more intuitive with color, move around, you know, try and figure out other color notes, similar color notes throughout and just continue doing it that way and arriving at the color right that's how i want to do it but that's just my way of doing it it's not the only way it's just my way of handling color and just like so and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to build like a like a very overall kind of skin color here and then I'm just going to do a dusting. Like a dusting of color, just like we do an airbrush. We're just going to do a dusting of a flesh color here. And we'll just move around and kind of try and unify some of these uh, shapes here, these color shapes. Because it's a little broken up and what we can do is unify it. And that works really well. So you see how I'm unifying some of the color in her skin. And zoom out. Make sure that you're seeing the whole, her whole face. So you can definitely get the relationships down. Then you can come back in with the airbrush. Really cool. And then you can introduce the airbrush in there. And really start to get that back and forth. See how that works? Really cool. So I can come in and get some of the work in with the airbrush so I can get all the great qualities of the airbrush as well as some of the great quality of working in color with pastel. So isn't that great? Then I can come in and you can also introduce things like pastel pencils. How about that? So I can come in here and I can put this sort of very warm sort of sienna color over here. And then I could bring that. I can also see, well, where does I echo that? There's an echo of this color right over here. So we could maybe introduce this a little bit like that. 
And the worst that happens is that you just get rid of it, but it's always good to see if it works. And that kind of works. So we're just going to continue along that line here. So you see as I'm slowly building it up, then it becomes much more unified and things start really, really uh, starting to look better as we go. There's a reflected light here, so we could sort of begin to get that reflected light. We can add some of this reflected light over here. Now, if you do like it and you like the way it's coming out, you can always introduce some of the packing peanuts, which are right here. And these work great. It's like, it's like $8 for a large pack which is great and they blend and you can actually you know shape them which is really fantastic so who's uh oh wow mike thank you so much for hanging out it's always a pleasure my friend and uh, i hope to see you next week mike and give me an email if you have any questions and paul says love the ink set very fun oh cool that's cool if anyone wants to check out the orange airbrush forum it's another great place for info and help, okay? We'll just continue this over here. And let's see if I could uh, just make that a little bit darker. I'm kind of coming with the dark here. And now what we can do is we can start maybe even making the hair a little bit richer and remember everything looks really dark because we are we're working with um, everything's light so once we darken that hair you're going to see that things really start to look a lot lighter and let me show you all that so right now we're going to come in and and hit this dark right here and you're going to see once I just put that there, now look how light the uh, face comes, right? Because it's simultaneous contrast. So look at that. So how cool is that? And um, so the live stream is just a teaser, Tim Classes. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And uh, so, so Paul says, love my ink set. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that, Paul. I really loved doing, I really loved uh, making them. I mean, it was really fantastic, a lot of fun. Now look when I, I actually darkened this over here. See when I come in with the dark, how everything that looked kind of dull and dingy starts to look a very, has nice translucency all of a sudden. I think that's so cool. I wasn't planning on doing a uh, pastel airbrush combination, but this is cool, right? How many out there like the fact that I'm going to uh, combine airbrush and pastel? So how many uh, people out there like this, or would you rather see 100% uh, airbrush? You let me know, because I always listen to you guys. I mean, this is something that you're not interested in or interested in. Just say yes for interested or no, not interested. And that would be cool. Oh, James loves the combination. Okay, one yay. All right, that's good. That's really cool. Oh, Brad thinks it's great. So cool. Two yeses. And it's something that I've been doing a while. You know, this is not something I just started. So it's something that I, you know, it's cool to share with you all because, uh, you know, it's something I've been perfecting. 
And you see how well they work together once I decided to go down this route, right? How well it works. And as you can see, look as I darken, darken that hair and come in. Oh, thank you. So Nameless loves the idea and the end results. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay, so it looks like a lot of yeses so far. So that's good. So I'm going to start doing it. You think it would be a little more uh, definitely something that isn't out there. So I think it's, it's something like really cool. So I'm still going to be doing my, of course, my airbrush India inks, you know, with the black and white and everything. And, but every so often I'll be drawing one of these in there, you know, but more but planning it, right? Which is much better that I plan it as opposed to this kind of came out of a need, right? So as you see, just watch though, how when I started putting in this dark, how it all came together. Hey, Clutch, you're back. So cool, I'm glad you're back because you can see how, how the pastel is really working with the, uh, with the airbrush. Right? It's really coming together. So I'm glad you came back to see that. And so that's cool. So you, so I'm coming in. And remember how, how weird it looked up here because it looked so dark. But putting in the dark of the hair really lightened that up, which is really good. So it's going to have... Uh, oh, break time. That's cool. Definitely. So glad you made it back, my friend. Because the great thing about airbrush is that you can get some really beautiful, beautiful contrast here. And you can go over airbrush with pastel and pastel over airbrush. So that's really good. And Nameless says, maybe that will be your niche. Every artist develops their own unique style. Very true, you know, it might be something that I continue going down that road. And of course, my India inks is, you know, I'm known for that. So maybe the combination of the two nameless would be really nice, right? And uh, so James says he finds that including the classical techniques helps in breaking down the disdain that students have of traditional methods for airbrush. Yes, that's true. That's a good point, James. So you have to have that combination of the old masters and the moderns, right? You know, the modern airbrush artists are just so fantastic. Drew Blair, Marissa, Steve Leahy, love their work. Uh, but also we have to make sure we don't discount the great, the greats of the past. You know, Rembrandt, Vermeer, Michelangelo, because those were the torchbearers. Without them, we wouldn't be here, you know having this knowledge so really great that we combine the two right which is so important but yeah this live stream is really popular 19 19 people right now in this late time which is unheard of so definitely between the book and working in pastel i think you guys are really loving this so that's good to hear i might continue down this road a little bit so definitely, so once again, you know, I only have two, three minutes left. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button. And this way you'll be alerted anytime I have a new uh, video coming out or a new live stream. Now the live streams are every Wednesday, 930 Eastern time. Uh, and I always do the portrait from beginning to end. And I have a lot on the channel, so there's a lot to actually catch up on, which is really good. And if they had access to airbrushes, oh, definitely. If they had access to computers and cameras, that's what I say. You know, a lot of people with traditional, they always say, I work traditional, I mix my own paint, I use linseed oil. And my thing is, yeah, you're doing what they did in the, in the 1800s, but... If they had digital, they would be using digital, you know, and influences on their art and everything. So, you know, it's very short-sighted for a lot of people 
to who are so called, you know, totally traditional because they're missing the boat. It's the combination of everything that works, right, guys? And that's what, what James was saying is that we have to have the combination of everything. That's what really works. So very cool. Uh, yes, and uh, and so very true, James and uh, Nameless. Great points, that's for sure. And Brad says, uh, another great feed. Thanks, Tim. Uh, she's looking awesome. Oh, thank you, Brad. You have a great night. Keep doing the great artwork you're doing there, my friend. Love it. Love what you're doing. And you see how we can actually bring some some nice color in here. And it's just something that you build slowly, right? It's not going to happen overnight. Color is something that, you know, we get there when we get there, right? It's, it's an additive thing. And you can see just by working with her how we're doing this, right? How, how it's coming together. Really... You know, I love pastel. I'm a signature member of the Pastel Society of America. Been, uh, you know, probably at least uh, 50 to 60 international national awards in pastel. So, and also I, I love airbrush. So it's a combination of the two, you know. So, all right, guys, it's 1130. And you know what that means? I will see you soon. And thank you so much, Paul, for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Brad, everybody, uh, take care. Once again, thank you so much. 20, 22 concurrent viewers at this late time. That has never happened before. So it must be the fact that I'm incorporating the, the pastel and everything. Sometimes the best things happen when you're not planning, right? So clutch, great live stream. And so glad you came back. Everyone, have a great night. And I will look forward to hearing from you soon. And Marcelo, thank you so much. Boa noite. Always a pleasure. So glad you're here. Take care, everybody.